$100 can get you 100 cigarettes, 10 months of a RuneScape membership, or today's graphics card. Now my usual formula applies for this video, meaning you are going to find out how good the cards are first, and only then will I reveal what they are. So that way you judge the cards without being already pre-positioned to hate one of them because of its brand. Now, we're going to buy one $100 off the shelf card, but we're also going to throw in a wild card by buying another card for $100, but this time off eBay and second hand. Now since we're comparing a newer card that's a bit slower with an older card that's a bit faster, this could be a very interesting battle as technologies and clock speeds smash together. Now for the test PC we are using my traditional test bench with a Intel Core i3-4130 at 3.4GHz, 8GB of DDR3 RAM and a Samsung 840 SSD, all with a 64-bit version of Windows 7. Jumping into the benchmarks in Far Cry 3, the new card managed a fairly unimpressive 31 FPS at its best and 15 at its worst, mostly staying around 24 FPS, all of this on the lowest settings of course. While with our older card, we were able to crank it up to the medium settings and get a maximum of 67 FPS, with 14 FPS at its worst and a perfectly playable 48 FPS for a majority of the time. Now the Crisis series can bring most GPUs to their knees and this is no exception. At high settings our new card pulls 36 frames per second at its best, 15 at its worst but mostly staying around 23. Compare that to our older card, which at an even higher very high preset, showed a maximum of 60 FPS, a low of 36 and an average of 47 FPS. I am starting to see the way this is leaning. Bioshock Infinite is an older but still very good looking game that can challenge a graphics card once the settings are cranked up. Running at low settings, the new card pulled 23 FPS at its worst, 41 FPS at its best, and stayed around 28 FPS for a majority of the time. Which isn't particularly impressive, but luckily our old card flexed its muscles on the even higher medium preset, pulling 72 FPS at its best, and a totally playable 42 FPS at its worst, mostly staying around 52. The old card at its slowest is the same as the new card at its best on the lower settings in this game. I think that should say something about the way this match is headed. Minecraft is a game that doesn't look demanding, but it can punish low-end GPUs immensely when you really start to crank the settings up. So that's exactly what we did. We maxed out the settings and found out our new card managed to pull 116 FPS at its best and 2 FPS at its worst, mostly hovering around a pretty choppy 24. That's not too bad for our old, but uh, our old card managed to effectively double that performance in Minecraft, pulling 243 frames per second at its best, 6 FPS at its worst, mostly staying around a perfectly playable 47. Now our last benchmark for these two mystery cards is Killing Floor. This game is older than most, but since it is one of my favourites, I generally like to judge a card on how it handles this game. Now both the cards did not disappoint with all of the settings maxed out. Our new card pushed 125 frames per second at its best and 29 at its worst, mostly staying around a smooth enough 47. Now the old card did not disappoint in the final stretch pulling a maximum of 433 frames per second, and 70 at its worst, mostly hanging around a very, very buttery smooth 133 frames per second. So, what are these mystery cards? The new off-the-shelf card was a NVIDIA GeForce GT 730 with 2GB of memory. And the old card from eBay was an Atai Radeon HD 5770, with a gigabyte of memory. Do I really need to calculate the scores? The almost six-year-old Radeon wiped the floor with the brand new GT730. Even when we made it harder for the Radeon by cranking up the settings, it showed double the performance of the brand new GeForce in every game we threw at it. 
but that's not to say the GT730 has some advantages over this old Radeon. For example, it runs happily on 38 watts with no need for the extra 6 pin power connector, whereas the Radeon requires almost triple that amount of power, requiring 108 watts, not to mention it needs that 6 pin auxiliary power input and a power supply above 375 watts just to be safe. So which should you buy? I totally recommend the 5770 as it is a great card for light gaming that will offer significantly better performance than any of the other cards in the price bracket. But there are a few things you need to consider if you go with this card. The single slot version works great with an old Optiplex like this one, but make sure your power supply has a 6 pin power connector to power it, otherwise you are going to have to upgrade the power supply of your beloved PC or just go with the GT730. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know if you have any comments or questions below and do subscribe if you like this kind of goofy computer content. Have a good night.